127,000. That's how many first-generation Neo ES6s the company says that they sold since it first debuted about four years ago. That number makes it their most important model because it's a volume seller. So when they reached out to ask us, do we want to be the first foreign media to test drive the second-generation ES6 SUV, the one that's coming to Europe, we said yes. The ES6 sits between the BMW X3 and X5 in terms of length and wheelbase. That means it slots below the ES7 in Neo's lineup, with prices ranging from 52 to 60,000 US dollars before options. However, if you pay a monthly fee to rent the battery pack, you can buy the rest of the car for just over 42,000. That makes it noticeably cheaper than the first generation ES6. Time to find out if that lower price came with some compromises. A great deal has been done to make the ES6 as smooth as possible here on the outside, both for stylistic and practical reasons. That includes touches like the aero ducts on either side of the headlights, side glass and pillars that are flush from A pillar to D pillar, and concealed turn signals in the door mirrors. The new ES6 is also 55 millimeters lower than the first gen car. That wouldn't be very noticeable on its own, but they also swapped out the chrome greenhouse accent for a completely blacked out roof, and the combination makes this car look sleeker and slightly more wagon-like. The result of all that hard work? A coefficient to drag of 0.25. That's slipperier than the 0.26 of the Mercedes GLS SUV, but just a little bit behind the Tesla Model X at 0.24. The all-new rear-end design is a departure from the first gen, but one that feels more modern as a result. Lighting front and rear is LED. On the rear here, they are said to use super red LED technology. And these upper brake lights here, said to be the thinnest in the industry at just 5 millimeters. This generation of Neo interiors has been consistently good looking, but with some material choices that left me genuinely confused. The ET7 and ES7 both cover their center consoles in a recycled material called Karoon, which looks alright but feels cheap. Not so with the ES6, which wraps the center console and pretty much every other surface in soft leather. Karoon is found only on the dashboard, where it is used as a design accent, not a touch point. This is also true of the cloth material used in the ET5 sedan. That car covered the lower dash in the rough, scratchy stuff, but you will only find it on the lower doors of the ES6. Oh, and that weird rubber on the doors of the ET5 also stays where it belongs on the ES6, in the bottom of the door pockets and storage cubbies, and that's it. Heated front row seats are standard on the new ES6, but you'll have to pay an extra 1,350 USD to add cooling and massaging, as well as heated second row seats. Those who want the most premium option can pay 2,100 USD to make sure all occupants get heated, cooled, and massaging seats. On a similar note, it costs an extra 2,300 USD for the real Mappa leather interior on our test car. Base models use synthetic leather. The heating and cooling functions for the seat bottom and backrest can be adjusted independently. For example, if I've got very sweaty legs but a sore back, I can turn on the cooling down here, but the heating back here. The optional queen seat is a signature feature of Neo SUVs, and it's gotten an upgrade for the second gen ES6. In addition to the fold down footrest and legrest of the first gen car, it now has a zero gravity mode, much like the one in the Zeker X. That means it will lay down the seat back while lifting the seat bottom, allowing for a much more comfortable posture. This feature only works when the vehicle is in park. One small but noticeable difference is the design of the buttons here on the center console. Now they have the same functions as those of previous Neos, but their shape is a little bit different. Instead of the large squares in previous models, they're now these little rectangles. They look very nice, but I'm not sure I like it as much as the large squares. It's not as easy to hit when you're not looking. The center screen of the ES6 measures 12.8 inches, a modest size among Chinese electric vehicles. This is complemented by a 10.2 inch instrument cluster screen and an HUD. This latest generation of Banyan, that will be the NEO operating system, has a few new features. One of them that I find very interesting is the ability for Nomi 
little personal assistant to give you reminders based on specific times, locations, or simply the next time you get out of the car. Hi, Nomi. 在哪？下车的时候提醒我把后备箱的东西拿走。好的，我会在下车提醒你把后备箱的东西拿走。记得把后备箱的东西拿走哦。Rear legroom wasn't a problem on the first generation ES6, and it certainly won't be on the new one, thanks to an additional 15 millimeters of wheelbase. Neil also says that they redesigned the seats in order to allow for better headroom, but what truly increases comfort in this car is the fact that the rear seat back now has eight degrees of adjustability. As in other Neos, the small LCD screen that controls your seat functions, media, air conditioning, and the panoramic sunroof is located on the back of the center console. The rear cargo compartment of the ES6 now has three different levels of storage, for a total of 668 liters with the seats up, and 1430 when folded down. Part of our test drive today is the ability to try out Navigate on Pilot Plus. That is the latest version of Neo's highest level of driver assistance system they currently have available. Previously, I've tried out the standard NOP. This is the latest version, so we'll be able to give you our first impressions. The ES6 uses the same Aquila sensor suite as other second generation Neos. This includes LiDAR, high definition cameras, ultrasonic and millimeter wave radar, and two high precision positioning units. All that hardware is backed by the Atom supercomputing platform, which has up to 1,016 tops of computing power. As it happens, I drove a Neo ET7 with the publicly available NOP system in Shanghai just the week before I drove the ES6, and I was not particularly impressed. The system was slow to make lane changes and often transitioned from NOP to the less advanced Neo Pilot for no apparent reason. The version I drove in Beijing was an improvement with quick, decisive lane changes and smooth braking and acceleration inputs. Lane centering still felt a little uncertain at times, even on very clearly marked roadways with little to no traffic. The system also insisted on disengaging in circumstances that I found hard to explain. Overall, I would rate it highly, but not as highly as the latest driver assistance from Huawei or Xpeng. This leg of the journey also allowed me to see the ES6's highway manners, and I was quite impressed. While the first-gen car had optional air suspension, this new generation makes do without. It also forgoes the double wishbone front suspension of the last car in favor of a five-link suspension both front and rear. Thing is, I didn't miss the air suspension in the least. I thought the ride of the all-new ES6 was a noticeable improvement, feeling more solid and less floaty than the first-gen car. Like every Neo, the ES6 has battery swapping, allowing you to trade your dead battery for a fresh one in about 5 minutes. There are two different batteries available, a 75 kWh unit that provides 490 km of CLTC range, or a 100 kWh pack with a claimed range of 625 km. Neo says their 150 kWh semi-solid state battery with a 930 km range will be available for rental at swap stations starting this summer. The ES6 has the same dual motor powertrain as the ET5 sedan, making 360 kilowatts and 700 newton meters of torque. That's more than the 320 kilowatts that was available from the previous base model. It's also less than the 400 kilowatts that was available from the performance version of the first gen ES6. But the company claims this new car has a faster 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time, 4.5 seconds versus 4.7. Having driven both of them, I have to say, I find that 4.5 seconds very easy to believe, and in fact, it's probably pretty conservative. Reaching that number requires the ES6's electric all-wheel drive, but the system can switch to rear-wheel drive mode to increase efficiency, such as when we were cruising on the highway. Eventually, we reached the mountains north of Beijing, where we were able to test the ES6 in a very different setting. Neil was nice enough to set us up with a closed off mountain road so we can see what this car's performance is like when you're driving it a little bit faster.
Throwing the ES6 into a few corners was good fun, but I quickly realized this wasn't its natural environment. The suspension of the ES6 has adjustable stiffness, but the difference is more noticeable when going over speed bumps than it is when in corners. Whether it's in Sport Plus or in Comfort, body control is pretty decent, but it's definitely not tuned to be a sports SUV. A Porsche Cayenne it is not, but that's something I'm willing to forgive, because Neo has never marketed the ES6 as such. It didn't take long for me to conclude that the positive characteristics I saw on the highway also applied to these twisty roads. Whereas the first generation car was just too soft, this one felt noticeably more solid and confident as I drove it up and down the mountain, finally reaching our destination and the conclusion of our review. On paper, it seems like this generation of ES6 had to give up some of the higher end features of the previous generation in order to achieve that lower price. I'm thinking of the air suspension and the lower levels of power. But when you actually drive the car, you realize that it outperforms the first gen in pretty much every respect. And I think it's going to give buyers exactly what they want from a Neo vehicle. Something that's large, luxurious, and prioritizes comfort over outright performance.